Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to go walk through a solution that uses the Azure AI Services Document Intelligence Service to read documents into data and store that data in, in a Fabric data lake. I'm going to use a Fabric uh, Jupyter Notebook to do the actual work, but I'm going to call the Azure AI Service from the Jupyter Notebook. So the process to accomplish this solution is first to create an Azure AI Service that can do document intelligence, and I've already done that, but I'll show it to you. And the second is we grab the keys from the Azure AI service and store those in an Azure Key Vault that the Fabric notebook can use. Um, and I'll show you where that is. And the next step in the process is to upload the data files that we're going to actually process. Uh, and we're going to do that within a data lake. Um, and then we'll write a notebook that reads in those files, calls the Azure AI service to do the document intelligence to extract data from the forms. And then we'll take that data and append it to a delta table in the data lake. So let's get into it. The first step is we need to have an Azure AI service instance. And I've already created that. So it looks kind of like this. So the overview of it is you can create a, a service that it does only document intelligence. So for any of the Azure AI services, you can create a very specific one that only does the one uh, activity. I created a multi-service account, so I can use the same keys to essentially access any of these services, which works for me. But um, but if I knew that I was only going to use document intelligence, I would create a very specific service for that. Now, uh, uh, document services actually is very flexible. You can use predefined models, which is what we're going to do today. So these are some predefined models like business card, invoice, layout, uh, receipt. I'm going to use the US W-2 tax form uh, service. So they've already created a model for that. If I wanted to process forms that were not in this list, of course, I could just train uh, Azure AI services to recognize my own forms. So in many cases, that's what we would do. But here for demo, it's going to be easier if we just use a form that's already here. The forms I'm going to read are uh, grabbed from the Kaggle uh, uh, US W-2 form. There's there's about 2,000 W-2s out here that, that you can download. They're not real. They, they Somebody generated 2,000 W-2 forms with totally fake names and data, so we're not violating any privacy issues here. And once we have the AI service created, we then go to grab the keys. So each Azure AI services has a key that you can access it with, so that's the technique we're going to use. So I copied one of these keys, for example, and I created a, a key vault. So this is Azure Key Vault. Um, so this is what this looks like. And I added that secret to Azure Key Vault. So the key we're going to use is Azure AI Services key. And that is the key that comes from the Azure AI service. OK, so that's, the, that's kind of the dependencies that are outside of Fabric. So if we go into Fabric, um, I have a table structure here. The, the output table that we're going to have at the end is all the data fields that are contained within the W2s that we process. So that's what that's what this output table looks like. But what we're starting with are images. So these are, this is not data yet. This is just a scanned image of a W2. So this one has all these data fields that we want to have in our table. But currently, they're in a scan. So how do we get that from here over to here? So that's our that's our that's our problem to solve, and we're going to do that using the Azure AI Services SDK for Python within a notebook. So here's the notebook that we'll use, and let me close that. Let me get that to somewhere else. I don't want to have two editors open at the same time for the same thing. We'll go back to the data lake. Not sure how I did that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so here's the notebook, and um, so I'm going to walk through this notebook. Um, there's a lot of stuff here, but it's actually there's not that much going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the main loop. So this is the process, right? So um, so what we want to do is we want to read files. So here's the new files that we've ingested into the data lake so far, and these are all the JPEGs, like I showed you before. And so we're going to read those JPEGs into a data frame. So that data frame will come back, and its content will be basically um, one row per JPEG, and it'll have the name, it'll have some other metadata, and then more importantly, it will have the the bits, so the an array of bytes um, that rep, that are made that make up the JPEG file. We need to change, and then for each row, we're going to process one row at a time. So this is not necessarily built for high scale, but doing it in a in a straight line like this linearly will make it easy to understand. But for each row in the data frame, we're then going to extract the bits, which are the blob, and the file name. Um, and you'll see why the file name we extract because we want to put it into the output table so we know which 
w2 came from which file uh, so we can have some lineage but the important part is the bits so in the bits we're going to change this into a base64 string and and this is how we're going to do that in python and then embed that within a payload object that we send to Azure AI services. And it, and it wants to have an, uh, an object that has this key, base64 source, and a base64 string representation of the input file. So that's that's what this, this piece does. And then we have a, a function that I'll go through, but I wrote a function that, um, that takes the bits in base64 format and the file name, because it appends that to the, the row object, and then returns that as an object. And then for that, row we're going to save that to the table um, and that this writes it out to the uh, the data lake table in delta format and then the, the rest of this is just some cleanup so once we've in we, we've OCR'd the the w2 we've saved it to the data lake um, we we're actually just going to move the file from from new files to the loaded archive so loaded archive has ones we've done before new files is ones we need to do and that's what the, this is just some some uh, file mop up at the end of the of the process and then down here we're just going to look and make sure our files got in there okay so let me kind of go up um, now I did say we have to integrate with AI services using a key from the key vault so this cell does that so what this cell is going to do is use the uh, Trident token library to go ahead and grab the key that we stored in key vault and store that in a local AI services key so um, let me do that real quick. And that just takes a second. And then if we wanted to print the key to look at it, um, we actually can't do that because um, the the notebook knows that that's a, that's a sensitive key and you shouldn't be looking at it. So it's, it, it redacts that. Uh, and then up here, I do need to run this dependency. So we're going to be calling the Azure AI Document Intelligence uh, SDK. So we need to install that with pip. So I'm going to go ahead and get that installed real quick. OK, that's done. Good. Uh, let me clear that so it doesn't clutter us too much. OK, so we've got the dependency. We've got the key. Can't look at the key, but we know it's there because it says redacted. And then just some constants here. So uh, the source folder is new files. The output folder is loaded archive. And these I just store up here so that I don't hard code them later on in the code. And then the delta table name is forms w2, which is right here. Okay, so the output that I want to put in the delta table, I, I created the, the schema in advance because I want to just make sure that, you know, all the fields are exactly what I want and um, they're named what I want, they, they have the types that I want and so on. So, so I'm just being very strict about this, so I created this. If I didn't do this, I could still save data to the, to the delta table, but it might not have the structure that I really wanted. So it's just a little discipline issue there. And then this is the, the function that actually reads the W2. Um, and this is where the, all the web service work is done. So basically what we're doing here is we're bringing in the dependencies that we uh, pipped up above from Azure. So we have the document intelligence uh, client right here. And we create a document intelligence client. It's pretty easy. We just give it the endpoint, which is one of our constants, right? Uh, where's the endpoint? Oh, right here. And and then the key that goes with the endpoint goes here, and that gets wrapped in an Azure key credential object. So, so now we can call this web service using this client, and what we're going to do is, is then call begin analyze client. So this is going to send that base64 string, um, and it specifies it's using a pre-built model. Again, if we were reading documents that weren't covered by a pre-built model, we just train our own model, and we would pass in the string for what our trained model is there. And then in this solution, I'm using a polar, so it's essentially it's just going to wait for the result for every W2, which is pretty time consuming. Don't do that in production. There, there are definitely better ways to do this. You essentially submit these all to Azure and then come back later and pull for you know all the responses so that you're not tying up your uh, your compute within Fabric waiting for that stuff to happen. This would be more appropriate in an end user application where the user's waiting for the response. So not, not a real good batch process, but, but it makes it easy for you to understand the demo, so I left it that way. Okay, and then for the output, then once, once the polar returns, we will have a sort of a list of all of the uh, W2s that were found in an image. In my sample data that I showed you, there's only one, but there could be multiples. So you could have you know, 10 W2s all scanned next to each other. You would get 10 rows, and this would enumerate over those rows. But we just have one. And then what this is going to do essentially is um, 
is read the JSON return from Azure AI services and reformat it into a single row with, uh, with all the fields that I actually want. So um, these are parsing through some embedded JSON. These are the, the, the ones below are probably easier to understand where it just says, hey, from the W2, get the key called wages, tips, and other compensation, store that in our data model with wages underscore tips, and, and make sure that that's a number when it comes out. So, so this is just, you know, you can read the code from GitHub, but basically what it's just going to do is it's going to take this kind of nested JSON object and, and create a row for our Delta table. And then that's going to return down here. So that's where that's analyzed the document. The next thing, save it to the table. So I have a function to do that as well. And then the second to last step is to append the, the data we found to the Delta table. And it's going to call this function, save batch to table. It says JSON objects. Um, and it's actually, it could be more than one if the image had more than one W2 um, in the image. In, in my sample data, it just has one. So really, it's going to be one object. But for each that it finds, which is one, it's going to create a row uh, with all of these fields have to be in the same order as the schema up here. And the, and the types need to match. And they will. And then here we create a data frame out of that array and then write that to the delta table. And the delta table name, as you remember, is a constant. So it's forms W2. So we're going to append that to the forms W2. So again, this probably should be done in a more batch oriented way, but you know, this is going to be appending one row at a time, which is not great efficiency for data engineering, but um, but it helps you understand, you know, how this how this actually works. Okay, and then once that's appended, then this is just the cleanup that moves the files around so that they won't be in the new files anymore and we'll we'll have a record of them in the loaded files. So that's how that works. So let's see what haven't we run? Let, let's run this and and so let's run this and see how it works. So we already did the install. We already have the key, but I'll run it again just in case I forgot. Um, we looked at the key, it's redacted. All right, let's set these constants, that's fine. Um, that's you know kind of our output table, that's good. Let's make sure we've got this function defined, that's great. And that's our save function, so we'll get that. Okay, and now we can run the main loop. And let's run that. So at this point, we're grabbing a data frame with a list of all of these files and the bits as well. And you can see here it's processing the first one, which it got 1017 as the first one. Not sure, you know, they're not in alphabetical order, but it's processing the first one, uh, pulling for Azure AI response. This is where it's waiting for Azure AI to actually, you know, Azure AI is doing this in a batch process. It's going to read the document. It's going to uh, parse out all the fields and then return the results in JSON. And now it's processing the second row. So I'm going to fast forward the video to when this is all done, and then we'll look at what new output we have to deal with. OK, so now our run is completed. So we can see it's processed all seven files. Um, let's take a look at the delta table now and make sure they're all there. So it was 12 through 18 are the ones I'm looking for. And let me make that a little wider. There we go. So there's. 16, I can see 18's there, 12's there. That looks pretty good. Uh, why don't we order that by something? Order by, there we go, that's better. Ah, there we go. All right, so let's look at that again. All right, so there's 12 through 18, so they all made it in there, and if I just want to kind of sanity check that, the 18 was Amy Klein. If I go and look at the scan documents and by the way if I look at my new files and refresh that I should see nothing in this folder great this one if I refresh it I should see more files added and that was Amy Klein so yeah that worked and her wages and tips were 157.070 something and let's see if that came in correctly 150.070.83 it was 83. Good. So that all worked. So so we're pretty much done. We've um, read in all of our new files, um, archived them into the archive folder. Oh, this hasn't been refreshed yet. There we go. Refresh that one over here. There we go. So we've archived them in the archive folder. We have the data in our data lake table as expected. So now we can bring that into Power BI or run reports or move it into our data warehouse, whatever we want to do with it. So that's it. That's the process. Um, pretty straightforward. 
uh, you know, a few moving parts, but you know, once you've kind of got it set up, you can run it pretty well. What I would again reiterate is, you know, doing things with polling and interactivity and pressing one file at a time, probably not a great process for scalability. Um, I would actually break that up so that the jobs were submitted to Azure AI sort of, you know, in, in, in batch and then have a different process that reads the results um, in batch as well to make things more efficient. But, um, but I set it up this way so it was really easy to follow and understand and, and linearly. So hopefully that helps. Uh, that's it. I hope you found this interesting or at least you learned something and I'll see you next time.